Hello, everybody. Welcome to one of the coolest treks at two. We have a very special guest with us. You guys recognize Aaron, but you may not, or maybe you do, recognize Christopher Adam. He's definitely a big deal. He is the 2021 Eagle Scout Project of the Year winner. That's Project of the Year. And he actually built an exhibit to honor um, heroes who uh, were at D-Day. And we're gonna talk more about that in a minute, but first just wanna say thanks for being on the show, Christopher. Of course, thank you guys very much for having me. It's a great opportunity to come here and speak in front of you guys today. This is always one of the more fun shows we get to do, Gina, when we have a live actual new Eagle Scout on our show with us. It's always very inspiring. We're gonna ask Christopher a lot of questions about how he did the project, uh, you know, the, the technical technicalities, the challenges of it. Um, the, the paper trail maybe that he had to cut through, recruiting volunteers, raising money, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's good information. Good to know if there's any prospective young Eagle Scouts out there. Christopher, you got your guy. If you have questions on how he did it, if you want any advice from an actual live Eagle Scout, now is your chance to ask those questions. Leave them in the comments. Gina, if I could real quick, I just want to give a real quick overview so people know what we're talking about. The Glenn and Melinda Adams Service Project of the Year Award is an award that's given to a project every year of an exceptional nature by an Eagle Scout candidate to a religious institution, a school, community, or any other entity through the completion of an Eagle Scout project. And that is what Christopher did. Uh, congratulations on the award, Christopher. Thank you guys very much. I'm very humbled and I'm very honored to uh, receive this award and uh, be the this year's winner. Um, obviously, I really just, I'm kind of blown away that I was picked out of all the Eagle Scouts nationally to uh, win this. Um, but I'm very happy that it was uh, that it was me and I, I feel like I, the hard work and all the stuff that I did for my project finally paid off. So um, I guess for everyone out there, this is my Eagle Scout project, Liberation Point. Oh camera's backwards um but yeah liberation point is my eagle scout project um i completed it november 9th 2019 liberation point is a project um dedicated to the 75th anniversary of d-day and most importantly it's veterans and those heroes that fought for um our freedoms and their sacrifices uh without what they did for us um we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that we are able to do today so that's really why i did my project and um yeah I know we're going to get a, a closer look um, at what's behind you in a minute, but just even from right here, it looks just stunning and astounding. And I don't even know where you would begin to like get artists involved to create such an and the construction. I mean, I can't. Wait. I know we're going to get into it, um, but before we do, should we should we take a look, get a little tour of what you created? Yeah, of course. I, I'd be happy to take you guys around. So really, let's quickly, do it. I'll flip my I'll flip my camera here. So. This is a, a, a quick overview of what Liberation Point is. Um, the centerpiece, I'll hop in here quick. The centerpiece of Liberation Point is two bronze statues. Um, the two bronze statues represent two American soldiers fighting on Omaha Beach during the Normandy invasions. Um, the Omaha Beach landings were one of the most brutal and um, kind of gruesome attacks in World War II, but it was one that eventually paid off in the end. And um, it very much so helped the American forces and um, all of the allied forces advance in their conquest or recon reconquest of Europe. Um, so these two bronze statues were worth about $40,000 once completed. Um, little known fact about these, I was actually one of the modelers for uh, the people that were sculpting them. They had to get drawings and uh, appropriate dimensions for it and things like that. And um, the guy on the ground there uh, who's laying with his rifle and things like that, um, that was actually supposed to be modeled after me. So just kind of a fun little side note in there. Um, so these two soldiers are hiding behind what is uh, known as a hedgehog anti-tank obstacle. Um, you commonly see these in pictures and in movies of uh, things about D-Day. These were designed by German forces to stop tanks and boats and things like that from coming up too far on the beach. Um, obviously because they don't want those things closer to their fortifications. So surrounding the centerpiece of this project um, is this sand and kind of gravel. Um, when I started my project, well, before I started my project, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Normandy, France, and um, learn about uh, the D-Day landings firsthand. I was able to go to um, all five of the different beachheads, actually, um, and tour them and kind of look around and see what these soldiers saw 75 or, I believe, 78 years ago now. Um, I was able to actually bring back sand from each one of those beaches, about a pound or two from each one. And there is some of that sand um, from each one of the beaches rededicated inside this project here. 
Um, but what you see at the beaches in France is that it's not like a beach that you would go to in California or New Jersey or someplace like that. Um, the sand is much more gravelly and kind of hard, almost like little pebbles. Um, and that's what I kind of have accurately depicted here. Um, so around all of this, there's a granite pentagon. Um, the five sides of the pentagon represent the five beachheads in Normandy, and each one has its appropriate plaque on top. So like this side right here is for Omaha Beach. Um, Omaha Beach is one of the American beaches, along with Utah Beach over there. And then Sword and Gold are the two British beaches, and in the back there's Juno. I just set it up like that because it's the most geometrically appease, uh, appeasing way. But um, the five sides of the pentagon represent the five different beachheads in Normandy. And so around the project, we'll go over to Gold Beach's board now because it's the closest one to me. There are seven educational boards. The educational boards are designed so that anyone from a fourth grader to a 40-year-old history buff would be able to learn something from these. So they have kind of a general overview of what happened at each one of the beaches. Um, they have a map showing you which one of the beaches it was and what happened there. Um, they have the different units that are on there. And then what I really liked about this project was there are different stories about the um, different soldiers that did outstanding things at each one of these beaches. So these weren't the generals that, you know, made it all happen. These are just everyday normal people who, when called upon, did extraordinary things. And um, there are some really cool stories in there. So that's how, you know, anyone can learn about it and kind of take something away and learn about the sacrifices that these guys made. So there are seven educational boards at my project. And you might ask, why seven? Um, so there's five for each one of the main beachheads, and then at the front entrance, there are two um, there are two big, larger boards about just kind of a general overview of what D-Day was, and then this one is about all the different special operations of D-Day. So all the paratroopers, all the Army Ranger units, and the glider units, and things like that. Um, so that was really one of the, the best parts of my project because I was truly able to um, kind of learn about what these soldiers went through. I was actually fortunate enough to be able to talk to and interview some of these guys when doing the research for my project and just to be able to hear the kind of things that they went through. Um, one of these men, I, I really I really can say that he's um, he's my friend after uh, going through this project. His name is Ray Wallace. Um, he's, I believe, 97 or 98 years old now. Um, he was an 82nd Airborne veteran from Pennsylvania. Um, and when he was 17, he enlisted in the Army, he enlisted in the paratroopers, and he was um, 18 years old when he dropped into Normandy Beach. I just had my 18th birthday, and personally, I can't imagine doing something like that. But um, he was 20 miles away from where he was supposed to be dropped, and for three to four days with a ragtag rag -tag unit of people that he had never met before, they fought off a Panzer Grenadier Battalion. Um, not just any Panzer Grenadier Battalion, but a Nazi SS Panzer Grenadier Battalion, which if you know anything about World War II history, like I guess I do from doing this project, that's like the ultra, ultra, ultra worst level of people that you want to fight. Um, but these, this group of fantastic men were able to fend these guys off for three to four days. But when the soldiers were escaping the town, along with most of the citizens, um, the uh, SS people committed some atrocities. They burned down the church. Um, they shot the medics. They shot the wounded. Um, and it was, it was really kind of a bad thing. But um, unfortunately, Mr. Wallace was captured and he was turned into a POW camp. Um, at said POW camp, um, he uh, was a railroad worker. Um, they forced him into labor and things like that. Um, but really kind of the thing that really gets to me when I heard his story was that when he went into the army, he weighed about 180 pounds. And when he came out of the POW camp, he weighed about 98. So he lost about half of his overall body weight. And it's just really an astounding story. But um, after that, he went home after the war and he lived a very fulfilling life. And, you know, really, it's amazing that I get to call him my friend because without his uh, kind of story, I, I don't know where I would be. It was really one of the defining factors that made this project not an option for me. It was just something that I knew that I had to do at that point after I heard his story. But um, one last thing before I wrap up about what my project is. There are four trees and four benches represented in each four uh, or each one of the four corners around the project. Um, the four trees and four benches represent the four main attacking countries in the invasion. So, for example, um, the American uh, tree is an American oak, representing America's national tree. Um, the Canadian tree is obviously a maple tree, representing Canada, so so on and so forth. And then there are benches underneath the respite so that after people uh, spend a few minutes learning about it, they can just kind of sit and realize and think about the sacrifices that these men made for the things that we're able to do today. So that all in all is Liberation Point. That's my Eagle Scout project. And um, yeah, I'm very proud of it. And I'm very happy to be here with you guys today. So thank you. You should be proud of it. It's very, very cool. Gina, we've had Eagle Scouts on here before. All Eagle Scout projects are great. 
some are above and beyond and this is clearly one of those really impressed by the the imagery uh the symbolism the you know the benches all this almost like uh, i don't want to say easter eggs right but all the little things that you know a casual visitor might not even notice obviously a lot of thought and preparation went into it uh but christopher i want to ask you start from the beginning uh am i correct that the inspiration for this whole thing it all started when you were in class and a teacher asked about D-Day or something like that. Can you tell that story? Yes. So I was in eighth grade. Um, we were getting ready to wrap up uh, our stuff for the year. So we were finishing off our units and things like that. And it just so happened that we were getting to the period right before World War II. And so he was kind of giving us a few hints into that. And he asked everyone in the class who knew what D-Day was to raise their hands. Um, at the time, I was in an honors history class. And I was kind of appalled to see that I was one of only three people who raised their hands and knew about it and knew about what these men had done. And so I was looking for an Eagle Scout project at that point. I put two and two together and realized that the 75th anniversary of D-Day was coming up soon. And I thought, hey, why not shoot for the stars? Why not do something that really honors these guys and make sure that you know they are uh, represented and that my generation doesn't forget about the sacrifices that they made for us. So I just kind of sat down, went to the drawing board, I tried to put a lot of symbolism in my project because I like to be like that. I like those Easter eggs, like you said. There actually is one hidden Easter egg somewhere in this park. Um, it's just kind of a little inside joke about World War II stuff. You see it all over the place. And maybe if you guys are nice, I'll show it to you in a bit. But um, <laughs> So, yeah, I was, able to, uh, I was able to put it all together. I was able to put it all together, and then my, uh, my project was completed. So, yeah. So what's really clear to me, and, you know, it's unique in some ways, Christopher, is that you didn't do this to like fulfill an Eagle requirement. You have a, a real passion for this and it happened to end up fulfilling an Eagle requirement. And I think that's really cool. And I think that that's what's really at the heart of, or should be at the heart of Eagle projects. Um, our viewers have a lot of thoughts too, after, you know, as, after during that tour, Xavier's watching from pack 817. He's a Cub Scout. Hey Xavier. Um, he says great stuff. Um, one of our viewers is actually walking, watching from Pakistan, and he says good work. Jonathan says great work. Tony says it's remarkable. Chrissy says she is so impressed, um, and she wants to know where your project is. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, Mark says thanks for thinking about these heroes, and Charles says really cool project. Well done. There's also somebody, another group that I think probably deserves a shout out because you know you don't you don't create a, an eagle project in a vacuum. We've got to give a shout out to your troop. Um, I believe it's Troop 88, right? That That's your yep, own troop? Yep, Troop 88 Mechanicsburg. Yep, answering the call. That's us. <laughs> Very cool. Well, okay, so I want to I want to set the stage for you to give a shout out to anybody. Like, who are some of the instrumental people who helped make this happen? Um, Definitely some of the instrumental people. Like I said, Mr. Wallace was a huge factor. Without his inspiration, I don't think I really would have um, uh, been as bound to this project as I was. Um, another huge shout out that I'd like to give is my family. Um, I'll start with my brother. My brother also did a huge project in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, known as uh, Unity Park. His was about Civil War drummers, and he also did a statue with some granite and stuff like that. And um, without him setting the bar so high, uh, you know, kind of at the stratosphere, I wouldn't have gone to the moon with my project. And, you know, I had to beat him in the end. So always a little <laughs> bit of brotherly love involved in things. But thank you, Andrew, for inspiring me to beat you. Um, next, I'd like to thank my mom. Uh, when I started this project, I was only 14 years old. When I ended it, I was 16. And I, at that point, um, in Pennsylvania, they didn't allow you to have a license. So she was driving me around. She was helping me. She was my spell checker. Um, she was my you know, speech writer. She was all sorts of different things in my project. And without her support, um, it wouldn't have been able to come together. Um, I'd also like to thank my dad. He's my technical advisor. He was always, you know, helping me with presentations and um, setting up PowerPoints and all sorts of different things that I had to do for my project. And um, I'd just like to thank the community and scouting at large. Um, without the community support in my project, I don't think I'd be anywhere um, where I am. Uh, you know, you can do great things if uh, you go to adults and they see a kid with a good idea that benefits their community. Um, for example, the granite at my project, um, it's a very rare type of granite known as Pennsylvania granite. Um, it comes from only one place in Pennsylvania. It's uh, about and 30 minutes away from Philadelphia. Um, I found out that the quarry was there and I found out that it was a type of memorial granite, which is what they use in uh, tombstones and different memorials and things like that. Um, I got in contact with the people that ran the quarry. I went out there for a meeting one day and just by talking to them, they donated all the granite in my project. I didn't have to pay for a penny of it and it's valued at over $44,000. So 
when they see that people have a good idea and that they want to put their passion and work into something that can really happen. And scouts is a great way that people can do that because without this program, you know, it's kind of uh, a really hard framework to follow if you don't have that. And um, being able to learn from my fellow scouts and being able to inspire younger scouts that hopefully will beat my project someday and go on to win their own uh, National Eagle Scout Project of the Year awards, that would be that would be fantastic. And as long as I know that I'm putting that kind of good energy back into the world, then it's all worth it for me. So, yeah. There, there are so many things that he said, Gina, that I want to make sure our audience catches. But I also want to real quick answer the question from our readers. Where is this project? Christopher, correct me if I'm wrong. You're at the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That is the U.S. Army's that is a primary historical research facility for the U.S. Army. That's a public park. I think you're at right. People can just walk by and see that. Yes. So, um, yeah. So what it is, is uh, the Army Heritage Center is a facility that does um, research and um, storing of different historical pieces for the Army. So they have a lot of copies of different um, things in history that they've encountered um, all the way up from the Revolutionary War through the most recent wars. Um, they also have a full outdoor exhibit that um, highlights the different Army values and things like that. And they also have an indoor exhibit that house some of their more, um, I guess, uh, uh, indoor prone things, so stuff that can't get wet and things like that. I'm sorry I lost the word for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. If any of the viewers out there know about, uh, all the different car shows and things like that, that is literally two minutes that way. I just went to one a few weeks ago. So, um, big area for history and big into cars if you guys are into that thing. So. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, do, do, I was just going to say real quick, I, I want to make sure everybody noticed that Christopher sort of got this idea. He said when he was in the eighth grade probably 13 or 14 years old, something like that. He completed the project in, I think it was 2019. So a couple yes. of years later, almost three years later, maybe an Eagle Scout project isn't necessarily something that you do in just a matter of a few weeks or a few months, right? It takes sometimes months and months and maybe years of hard work, dedication. It certainly helps for it to be a topic that you're passionate about, right? That's what Christopher said, you know, this is something he was interested in, something he cares about. That, I think, makes a huge difference. Um, Christopher, another thing about Eagle Scout projects is you kind of have to stretch yourself a little bit. You have to raise money. You have to ask for help. You have to get forms signed. You have to go in front of people and tell them why they need to approve this, all that stuff like that. Tell us what that was like for you. Were you comfortable getting up in front of people and asking for permission and asking for money and asking for volunteers and all that? Absolutely, I was. Um, I'm... I. I wouldn't say that I like public speaking, but I happen to be good at it. So um, I can go into a room of people and talk about a project and just kind of pitch my ideas. Um, I utilized the technology that was available for me. So I had one of these little portable projectors that I brought around in places. I showed a slideshow and I showed them pictures of what the project was hopefully going to look like in the end. Um, and I was able to fundraise and I was able to get materials and things like that donated that way. Um, talking about the approvals for the project, especially. Um, because I'm on a federal facility uh, with it being the uh, United States Army, I actually had to run through about three or four different phases of approval with them. So I had to get an approval from not only the Army Heritage Center, but I had to go through their team of attorneys and things like that, and then go all the way up to the Secretary of the Army at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And then that approval had to come all the way back to me for me to be able to do this project because of the costs associated with it. But um, I was never really afraid to jump out and do my project. Um, if you don't have the courage to, you know, step out of your skin sometimes and just uh, be able to do something, then it, yeah, you might not be able to get things done. So if you can't really push yourself forward to do that, then um, it makes everything a lot much harder. So I was just fortunate enough to be able to have those skills and to be able to do it. And like you said, um, when people find something that they're passionate about, it makes it a lot much, uh, like much more easier for them to do. Um, I encourage that uh, scouts and, you know, my friends and things like that, hey, I'm looking for a project. I always encourage them. Find something that you're passionate about because then your heart becomes bound to it. And when your heart becomes bound to it, you know, it's, it's something that you have to do and not something that you want to do. So that was really uh, an important part of my project. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. And now the whole community is benefiting from something that you say, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to do this. And now the community is fortunate enough to be able to, you know, go there, see this. You've got a lot more comments coming in. Um, New uh, Newville Cub Scout Pack 174 is watching and they say they love your Eagle project. Congratulations. Some things need to be learned and remembered. Such a good point. If, if we don't put things like this up, 
how will we ever remember? You know, it's a, it's a talking point. Potentially, maybe some Cub Scouts are going to see this park at some point and have a whole lesson on it. And I think that that's really cool. Paul says, hey, congrats. That looks like a lot of work went into it. Um, it very clearly does. Just a reminder for everybody who's watching, um, Christopher actually won uh, the, Eagle, the 2021 Eagle Scout Project of the Year Award. This is an exhibit to honor heroes of D-Day. Uh, there's actually a Brian on Scouting post about this, a blog that's up now if you want to read more in depth about this story. But something that I saw, um, we talk about a little bit about how there's some a leadership component in an Eagle Scout Project. You talk about the edge method. Can you share what, what that is and what that looked like? Uh, so the edge method for uh, all my fellow scouts out there that know it's educate, demonstrate, guide. Um, I feel bad. I'm blanking on the last point, but <laughs> I, I followed most three of those um, when I was doing the uh, manual labor for my project. So unfortunately, because of the different things involved in my project, I had to do a lot of it and I had to have a lot of it done by um, professional contractors. Um, personally, I'm not a sculptor that can uh, do these amazing statues. Um, I'm also not a steel worker or a granite worker, but um, in the different parts of my project that I was able to, I was able to um, incorporate scouts into that. And what I did was I brought them in and I used the edge method to teach them um, the different parts of what I had to do for my project. So when it came to digging holes or outlining trenches, moving gravel and things like that, I um, demonstrated to my scouts and I educated them about how to do things safely, demonstrated how to... Um, uh, I demonstrated to them how to do the thing safely and um, do it in a way that it can get it done. And then I also helped guide them through and make sure that everything went well. Um, but with the professional parts of my project, I also still had to kind of work with them and use kind of a very much so um, leadership bound uh, set of skills. Um, so when it came to the different things, I obviously had to talk to the sculptors about what I wanted. I had to find pictures and things like that to show them um, what the project or what the, um, the sculptures should come out like. Um, when it came to the granite, um, I actually did most of the granite polishing myself. Um, so when the granite was given to me, it was uh, given to me in a raw form. It's like if you pick up a rock off the ground, you feel it, it's kind of scratchy and uh, gross. Um, I had to polish it down so it has that high sheen and you can kind of see your reflection off of it in the rain. Um, I actually gave up a large portion of my summer to be able to do that. Uh, it was kind of an interesting process, but because of you know, liabilities and things like that, they only invited me and not my scout troop to be able to come and learn how to polish granite and then do that. Um, and also with the steel, I actually did most of the steel work for that myself. I drilled the holes and I learned how to weld. Um, I, you know, just working with the community and being able to identify these different companies that could help me. Um, I was able to learn skills and uh, I don't have any plans to go into a welding field or a field with granite fabrication, but I now know the skills and I know that um, it's, uh, it's very hard work and that it's something that can benefit the community. So, yeah. Very cool. For yeah, sure. I, I think the, the centerpiece, it looks like of that project, that, the whole thing's impressive, but that sculpture in the middle, I feel like, you know, kind of the centerpiece, kind of the highlight, like you said, you're not a welder, you're not a sculptor, but that's important, an important message, I think, to, to Eagle Scouts, for prospective Eagle Scouts, to know that you can recruit help, you can ask for help, you don't have to literally build everything with your own two hands, and, uh, and I think that, and I'd be curious to know what kind of response you got, Christopher, a lot of times we hear that when you say, I'm a scout, I'm a Boy Scout, working on my Eagle project, people are likely to want to help. People want to help you do that. What, what kind of reaction did you get when you asked for help? Absolutely. Um, when people see that there's a scout who's passionate about something in their community, um, they're very willing to help and support you. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I was fortunate enough to be able to go out and speak to a lot of different VFWs and American legions, obviously because they're associated with the veterans of America. Um, they would be willing to support me in something like this. So I ended up going on over about 50 different fundraising missions and um, just missions to different places in the area that would be able to support me with my project to get, you know, things like concrete, gravel donated, the steel donated, the granite, the granite donated, and then also the things like the money to pay for the statues. Um, but the response to my project was fantastic. I don't think I had a single person turn me down or turn me away. Um, even if it wasn't money that they could support the statues for, they were supporting me with something else like food for my work days, um, like granite, like I said earlier, or the, just their skill, their time, um, their expertise with different topics. And um, that was a fantastic way to just kind of bring everything together and incorporate all the different parts of the community that I work with. Very, very cool. And now I know we have just a few minutes left, but I, I want to get to the big question or one of my big questions. Um, and again, for a reminder for everybody, 
Christopher won, you know, the, the he's the national winner for the Eagle Scout Projects of the Year. I hear him called the Adams Awards sometimes, and he's representing the Northeast region. And his council is the New Birth of Freedom Council, but he won the big pro the big award that he's the national winner. Um, what did that process look like? How did you how did you win an Adams Award? Um, so what happens to win an Adams Award? Um, somebody that knows a lot about your project, it could be you, it could be a scoutmaster or your parents or whoever, um, they nominate your project based off of the things that you've done. And then you go in front of a bunch of different uh, boards of people and they learn about your project, they learn about what you've done. And then it passes on from a troop level to, I believe, a council level. And then from there to the regional level, which is the four regions of America. Mine was the Northeast, so that covers from, I believe, about Maryland all the way up to Maine. And then from there, those four winners compete on a national basis. And so that was how I was nominated and how I won. Um, it was kind of a, one of those just weird things that happens that I, I found out about it. And then I found out that I won regionals. I was like, I didn't even know that I won council. And then about a week later, I was sitting down to uh, eat dinner one day. And then I pick up the phone and I hear um, Mr. Adams, the guy who uh, set up the award. He goes, Christopher, I, I know that you're about to sit down to eat dinner, but I think this is really important. Um, you won the national award and I was blown away. I was in shock and awe and I was completely honored, but you know, dumbfounded at the same time that I was the person that was chosen out of about the 50,000 Eagles uh, or the 50,000 scouts that became Eagles this year to win this project. But um, I feel like it wasn't mostly for me. I feel like it was mostly for the, the veterans that this project hopefully goes out to honor. The, the young men and women who didn't come home from D-Day that sacrificed their lives for the freedoms that we have today and the ability to, um, you know, come out, learn about D-Day and then learn about you know, all the different things that we can and then be scouts and pass that knowledge on to, you know, whoever they may pass it on to someday. So, Very, very cool. Guys, Christopher has promised to reveal an Easter egg. He guaranteed it earlier. We're just a minute or two away from that before he does that. But I do just want to say real quick, so Christopher won the 2021 Adams Award. You might notice uh, his project was completed in 2019. That's because of the way the dates fall. It's kind of like the Academy Awards for, or for movies for the year before. So if you're interested, if you know anybody watching knows of a good Eagle Scout project, the link below right now, right there, will tell you how to go nominate them for their award too. We're going to need a 2022 winner and a 2023 winner, 2024 winner. Those ideas are probably out there percolating right now or maybe uh, just getting started right now. Uh, Christopher, I would love it. You, you've shared a little bit of this already, but I would love it if you could share just a little bit more words of advice or inspiration for younger scouts. We have even some Cub Scouts who are watching now who are thinking, man, someday I want to be an Eagle Scout. Uh, you mentioned passion and things like that, dedication. I wonder if you could just offer any final words of wisdom for any young aspiring Eagle Scouts. Yep. So um, I, I know that you guys mentioned this before and that some Cub Scout packs might actually come out to see here. Um, fortunate enough, I am a den chief right now. I'm serving with a local pack that operates out of one of the churches in my area. And um, they actually came out recently to view my project. And I was able to uh, I was fortunate enough to speak to them and, you know, tell the little guys what it was all about. But um, one thing that I told them was that when you become an Eagle Scout, find something that you're really passionate about to make your project about. And then it shouldn't be just checking off a box and just making it, OK, yeah, I'm getting it done. You know, we're moving on from that. Really make it something that's going to make a lasting impact in your community. Make it something that you care about, that you can take your uh, future little scouts to someday and then show them and say, hey, I did this. Um, Another thing, the sky is the limit. I encouraged every single one of those guys to come and beat out my project and hopefully win their own uh, Adams Award someday. But um, really, this, you know, anyone can do something like this as long as you apply yourself and put effort into it. Um, the, the, the resources for you are there. Um, talk to somebody that you know who's a scout. Talk to, talk to another eagle that you know. Um, learn everything that you can about what you want to do and just go out there, make it happen. Um, and yeah, so really, um, I, I remember when I was still a Cub Scout, I always knew that I wanted to be an Eagle because my brother talked about it so much. But, um, you know, being an Eagle is really fortunate. It's opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, recently, I was just uh, looking for a job and things like that. And I had multiple offers in the same day, not because I had any paid experience before, but because I had the experience of becoming an Eagle Scout. And it's also helped in the leadership things that I do in school. It's helped me in sports and it's helped just all over my life. Um, it's it's going to especially help me when I apply to colleges this year. I'm going into my senior year of high school, but um, it's it's very beneficial for your life. And it's very beneficial not only because of what it does for you and your community, but because of the lessons that it teaches you. It teaches you to become um, an amazing person and even more importantly, an amazing uh, scout. So, yeah. 
I love that. I was going to actually ask what's next for you, but you answered that. So now my my final question is just, have we been good enough to maybe get to see the Easter egg? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> so a little bit of backstory yes. on this. Um, I, I'm sure that, you know, a few people in the audience have seen a lot of the classic World War II movies of, of the 1970s and things like that. Kelly's Heroes always comes to mind just because that's where I kind of first saw this. Um, so in World War II, there was a man, um, his, I believe his name was John Kilroy. And so what his job was, was to inspect ships, uh, like big cargo ships, when they were coming off the line. Um, but people thought that he wasn't doing his job. So what he did was he created this little um, tag, if you will, like when you, uh, or like when criminals graffiti things. But it's, it's almost like a little tag that he wrote on the inside of ships so that when people got on them, he would see, hey, I inspected the ship. It's safe to go. Um, and so the little tag is this little guy creeping over a wall and it just says Kilroy was here. Um, so that kind of spread like a wildfire throughout the different theaters of World War II. So a lot of army personnel um, were drawing it on their trucks and tanks and things like that after they landed in Normandy. And then the Marines and things like that were drawing it all over their helmets and all over their rifles and things like that um, when they landed in the different islands in the Pacific. So what I wanted to do was kind of incorporate that little um, meme, if you will, because it is one of the first memes, technically. Um, I, I love those kind of internet things, and uh, I just think it's kind of a funny thing. But um, I purposely put it somewhere that you wouldn't notice it unless you were really looking hard. So um, I'll encourage, yeah, I'll encourage the Cub Scouts and all the, the people who uh, would like to come see my project to kind of find it. But I'll give you guys a quick hint here. Um, you might not be able to see it just because of the lighting and the way that it is, but I put it right there on the soldier standing up rifle. Also, if you come to my project, don't step in the gravel. <laughs> Only I get to do that. <laughs> That's but, really um, yeah, cool. It's, you just, know? It's, it's just something that I put in there. I, I love playing video games and things like that. And when you find the little Easter eggs and stuff, it just kind of makes your day. Um, it might not be a monetary award. It might not be a merit badge, but it's still just one of those fun kind of things that you can have. So. You know, I, I was familiar with that Kilroy's here. I'd heard that before, but I didn't realize that was the backstory. That's fascinating. Yeah. Thanks for educating me on that, Chris. That's great. Of course. See, <laughs> see, this project is designed to help people learn, and you learn something today. Absolutely. Yes. Perfect. Um, and really, that was a nice little bonus for anybody watching our Truck at 2 today, because although we have a good amount of viewers, there are many, 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 many more potential guests to the park who don't know this. So I just feel like we're the lucky special few. And it's incentive to make sure you guys keep watching Truck at 2, although this one is sadly wrapping up. We will be back Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central. Um, is there anything else we need to touch on before we go, Christopher? Um, I just like to make a quick shout out to all the veterans, um, whether they be from World War II or the more uh, recent wars in the United States history. I want to thank you guys all very much for what you uh, for what you've done for our country and what you continue to do for our country. Um, without your sacrifices, we wouldn't have the freedoms that we have today, and we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that we're able to do as Americans. So, without your support and things like that, um, we'd be at a completely different place. And I kind of don't want to imagine that. So, thank you guys for everything you've done for us. And um, yeah, that's all for me. Perfect. That's a perfect way to end the show. Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Great job. Very, very inspiring. I'm inspired by it. I know Gina is. I know our viewers are too. So thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys very much for having me. It's a huge honor. And I'm, uh, I really hope to see some of you younger Cub Scouts some days, a few years down the line when I'm in college or when I'm off, I'm uh, working and things like that to see that you guys will eventually win this award. So please, the sky's the limit. Come beat me someday. You guys got it. I got faith in you. That's awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see everybody again on Wednesday. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Christopher. Absolutely. We'll see you guys. Have a nice one.